After taking a break from projects last week to enjoy the fall weather, we're right back at it. Since we left you, we've cleared land for our septic system, had that system installed, laid new floors in our living room, and much more. This week, we're vamping the kitchen and taking on a major project to prep the permanent home that we're gonna move the camper to here on the ranch. Let's do it. We're Matt and Cass, a couple of adventure chasers seeking the roads less traveled in today's world. For the last three years, we've been living on the road. First, in our bus home, Lady May, then a rad van Jolene. Our journey brought us through the wildest parts of the United States, from the crystalline springs of Florida to the incredible peaks of Idaho, and then spending six months internationally traveling all through Mexico. But today, we put the van in park to take on a new challenge, the building of a fully off-grid homestead in rural Tennessee. So when they did the septic, we did a whole bunch of clearing ourselves, um, but we left this one pine tree because we knew they were gonna have to cut through where it was. And we don't have a ton of pine trees on the property, so we really wanted to make sure that we could have it. Yeah, so we want to have at least a little bit of green here in the winter. <laughs> so we're trying to save as many of the pines as we can. So they just scooped it out with the excavator, put it to the side, and we are now relocating the old pine. Matt is gonna go get a scoop of the mushroom compost. And yesterday he dug this big hole right here so that our tree could find a new home here. And hopefully it'll take nice. Um, like I said, we're trying to save as many of these pines as we can, not only for privacy, but for also sound barrier and just to have some green here in the winter months. <laughs> Fill in this spot really nicely. It's gonna look like Christmas. <laughs> we could decorate it. I know. So I'm gonna should... pull it out. We'll put a little bit of the mushroom compost and the other compost, mix it with the soil that's already here. Mix okay. it a little bit, pop the tree in. back in, and then we'll just bury yeah. it with a mix of the same thing. I hope it takes. It's really pretty it's here. Pretty Hello, Liza. How do you do? I'm writing you a letter. I hope it reaches you. Cause we can go I know it's more. been a long time since you heard from me. I'm still kicking around here in Tennessee. I heard you got a new place. I heard you got a new job. I think he's gonna look good, baby. Me too. Me too. Saving those pines. Saving those pines. He's pretty straight up too, right? Yeah. We're gonna have to like really pack this down. We'll water him in a little bit. It might be actually be better to do that now. Water him? Yeah, add some water. I'll do like one more, one or two more shovels. Water so that, because this is kind of clay heavy, that'll kind of settle in with the water and then we keep going. And aeroplane shooting across the sky. Surely take it looks so good already. It does look good. A little it's going to be dashing green. Yeah. I think it's a really nice spot for it. I think so too. I love it. What are we going to name this one, honey? I don't know. What's your other one's name? Arthur is our other pine who's like living over there. He's pretty big, but we've been like protecting and we've been clearing out the area around him so that he can grow really strong. But now we got this baby. Let's see. Let me, let me take it. Take a look, come back. Oh, wind is, wind is blowing. What do you think? What do you think about Jeremiah? Jeremiah? <laughs> Jeremiah the pine? Do you disagree? No. 
Jeremiah. Jeremiah the pine. It looks good with the cabin right there. That, that's what I was thinking. The green, the red, the black. It goes real nice. Jeremiah the pine. Jeremiah. Shooting across the sky Can surely take your body to a new place for a while Taking your turn at planting Jeremiah? Yeah. We got to equally give him affection. <laughs> Nice little tree. He's not gonna be a little tree for very long. I think he's gonna grow big. Yeah? Yeah. There are you and your tree. Best buds. <laughs> Me and Jeremiah. You and Jeremiah. Here for the long haul. <laughs> What's Jeremiah's favorite month? Juniper. Juniper. How does Jeremiah say goodbye? Cedar later. I like that one. You like that one? Like See you later. Who's Jeremiah? <laughs> <laughs> Who's Jeremiah's favorite actor? Spruce Lee. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're done. <laughs> it took us a very long time to make the decision on the flooring, but we decided to go with this really dark wood peel and stick flooring, which we really like here in the living room space. And then over here in the kitchen is all what we're gonna do. So we're gonna match it completely all the way through to the bathroom. For now, at least we're gonna keep the carpet in the bedroom because my husband really likes the idea of carpet in the bedroom. So we'll see if we can keep it and keep it in good condition there. I'm working on ripping the carpets out of the bathroom and underneath it, I found out that we actually have the same tile, like the same flooring that's in the kitchen, except because they've been covered with carpet, they look brand new, which aren't my favorite. And I don't think our Kess is favorite, but she did kind of like them. So I'm gonna show them to her and see if she wants to keep it. Now, the reason for potentially wanting to keep it is the sticker tiles that we're working with will have gaps in between each sticker tile. So if water gets in it, they say they're semi waterproof. This is all solid, so in the bathroom it would be a big benefit. Hey, honey. You outside? Yeah. Ah, I'm stuck on a staple. Hang on, hang on. You know how you kind of like those floors? Yeah. Well, come here, in the bathroom. What do you think? I just vacuumed them up a little bit. You know, I think we keep them. Do you? I do. I think we need definitely need trim. Yeah, I'm gonna tr everything. trim around the carpet and everything. But I think I need to. Can you unhook? Yeah. Look at my sock. <laughs> there Ooh. we go. I think we keep them at least for now. But yeah, because it also like brings like a nice light into the space. Because it's the darkest dark. space. Yeah. Yeah, because not that much like natural light that comes into the bathroom. Yeah. And then we don't have to worry about doing anything around, around the, the toilet. Around the toilet. Assuming this is cut nicely around the toilet. That's interesting that they put this under. Well, it goes into the bedroom, too. Oh, it goes into the bedroom, too. Yeah, which I, I want to try to save the carpets in the bedroom, but I know you do. with all this dirt, it's kind of gross, but. Yeah, we'll see. I think we keep them now. The only thing is like these. Yeah, we'll pull them out. You think it'll be OK? Yeah. Cool, they look good. See, this is what I wanted in the kitchen, but it's OK. Let's keep ripping this carpet out. Gross. Ooh. No more bathroom carpet. <laughs> no more bathroom carpet. Not our vibe. Be gone! <laughs> You're silly, honey. Yeah, you just gotta be silly through projects like this because they're not super fun. Be gone. Gone, get gone. <laughs> So I'm really, really excited to get this project done because if you guys follow us on Instagram, you know that I've had one hell of a time trying to find flooring that I like. It's always really tough to match the cabinets. Um, we are doing our best we can to keep these bottom cabinets. They are in such good condition. And I actually really like like the red outline trim on them. My favorite cabinets in the world, but they have this really like authentic cowboy kind of vibe. And that is what we're going for here. So I'm keeping the bottom cabinets the way they are. And then we are going to paint the top cabinets. So that's kind of what we're going for right now. Getting these floors in is going to transform this whole space.
So we're taking these up. These are the mounts that are gonna hold the table in um, that were part of the dinette that we're gonna repurpose for this. But I wanna lay the floor right across them so that it like looks flush and perfect around it. So we gotta take these off, but it's not coming up too easy yet. There we go. So while the cast cleans the floor, I'm gonna take y'all to a new exciting part of the property. Come on in. When they were putting in the septic, they already had an excavator here. Cause we wanna move the camper away from where it is. Because once the summer comes back, it gets pelted by the sun right there. So we're moving it back to where we originally parked the van when we first moved onto the property. And we had the septic guys with the excavator get us a nice level plot here. Um, now this is great because during the winter right now, there's no leaves on the tree and it's still gonna allow the sun to passively heat the camper but then when summer comes all of those leaves on all these trees around us are going to fill in and block at least the majority of the sun out now while i'm down here i know a lot of y'all have reached uh, uh, out to us about enclosing the bottom of our camper and don't worry that is on the plan for us um, some people were concerned that we were getting on some cosmetic projects while not focusing on enclosing the bottom of the camper but that wasn't an option because all along we knew that the camper was not staying where it was going to be so once we get it down here we'll be able to work on that project starts to heat we're actually gonna be able to have four different options. Because there's so many windows on the camper during the daytime, we'll be able to take that passive solar heating into the camper, option one. Option two, I just removed the propane heater. Uh, it wasn't working properly, we probably could have fixed it, but we've had a lot of really good experience with diesel heaters. And the pro about diesel heaters is, as a lot of y'all express concern about with moisture and humidity in the camper, propane heaters let off moisture. Diesel heaters do not, they give off a very dry heat. So that is gonna be our primary source of heat to keep our camper above freezing. The idea is that that, that diesel heater will just keep our camper at a baseline temperature, and then we will have a wood stove, which we're gonna have a very exciting project of that installation here on YouTube, to keep our camper within a more comfortable setting. Now the diesel heater can be used to keep it all the way up to that temperature, but the idea of the wood stove is, look at all the wood we have. We'd rather use that than diesel. And then our last option, as we upgrade our solar system, we'll actually be able to use some space heaters to heat the camper as well. So we will have lots of different options and we have a backup generator so that we can run a space heater in an emergency. So we got plenty of options to stay warm. We appreciate everybody's concern. I think Cass is almost done, so I'm gonna get back to work. The floors are ready, baby! Woo woo! But well, first, I gotta strap up the old man knee protectors. <laughs> he has the old man knees. Ugh. All right, update on the flooring. They're going in pretty good. I'm definitely going to be trimming around the edges because there's not really a way to get a perfect meeting at the edge. But other than that, they are laying very nicely. I think they're gonna look pretty good in this space. I don't know, I'm maybe halfway. Still got a lot to go. Close peel them and stick them. been extremely warm here in Tennessee the last few days. We had that cold spell and then it got really, really hot to like 80s and above. Even right now, it's actually started to cool down a bit again, but I'm still in a tank top. So winter is not here yet. It's finally cool enough where I can start baking again, which is awesome. And today I'm going to make our acorn flour bread versus pancakes. Last time we made pancakes, this time we're baking bread. Um, I'm trying to bake as much as possible. It's fun, it's good. It's all foraged here from the land, which is so cool. It gives you all the excitement. We are keeping it in this nut jar right here because that seems to be a good. Look at all of that. That is a huge thing of acorn flour. From last week's video, these are all the acorns that we got from the creek. 
and we have processed. So we are ready to cook. If you guys have been here a little bit, you know that I am not the one that's usually in the kitchen. Matt is the kitchen guy, right? He is the chef. I have promised him that I will try to bake more. That is my one promise is that I am going to try to get into baking more. Acorn flour bread. Like I said, I'm not the best baker in the world. I've done a few things. I started actually only baking when we moved into the bus. I didn't even bake before that at all. Um, so I'm still very much learning like the kneading processes and like all of that kind of good stuff. And that's why I freaking love it here. I just like, it's so good for me. It's so good for my brain. It's so good for my body. I'm just like constantly learning different things and that's what I love about homesteading. So like, I don't know it all, like by any means. So that's what, like the perfect thing. Everything is a process, everything you have to learn. And it just keeps me so like mentally stimulated and physically stimulated, which is awesome because like, I think that was something I was really missing before we hit the road. And that's what I loved about living on the road is that like I was constantly being stimulated, right? I was constantly in a new place, constantly learning new cultures and different things. And that's so great. If you have the time, the money, and the means to travel, go do it because it's life changing. But now that I'm here, I'm just like, this is also so great. Like having the time to do this kind of stuff and to learn how to make acorn flour bread from the acorns here on my property. Like that's so freaking cool. Um, so I hope you guys think it's cool. I love it. It's gonna be a lot of work spreading it. Yeah, it is. But it'll give us a good base. Absolutely. Look at all my gravel, baby! Five tons of it. Five tons! I think it is going to be perfect in the spot, but we have a lot of work ahead of us yeah, to rake this all out. This is crush and run. We're gonna do a couple inch base, kind of whatever this ends up getting us. Uh, we don't really have to gravel too much under where like the overhang of the fifth wheel is. It's really just for the base to uh, make what it's sitting on solid. Checking the beats. I'm checking my one beat. Your one beat. <laughs> my one beat. And Matt's gonna eventually make me borscht. Um, the floors are done. Well, mostly done. I don't have okay. the trim done yet. I know, I know. Let's go. I'm excited. I think they look pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, off. take your shoes off. Don't make them dirty already. Babe, they look so good. Wow. Wow. They look perfect. They came out really good. Yeah. They're like a lot cleaner, huh? Oh my gosh. Just gives us like whole space, just like a little bit of a facelift. Yep, plop everything in here. They're gonna look pretty solid. They look so good, babe. Woo woo. One project done! Actually, it's like our third project of the day. The last thing to do here on the ranch, move all that gravel into our new RV pad. Let's do it.
in hindsight, we probably should have had him drive down and slowly bring it out. <laughs> we get a good workout. We get a good workout. Right. And That's then when ranch we have fit. equipment to do it, like Kat said a minute ago, yeah. we'll be that much more appreciative of it. That much more thankful because we've done it with our hands. All right, these rocks ain't gonna throw themselves, honey. No, they ain't. It's projects like this that make me really laugh when people comment on our content. Oh, it must be so nice being so rich. Because, I mean, back there, you see all the land that we cleared for our septic system uh, by hand with weed whackers to save $1,000 on that install. Right here, we are moving 10,000 pounds of gravel by shovel, that's five tons. Doing all these projects by hand right after laying sticker tile flooring in my 1988 camper that's gonna be my house. <laughs> um, sorry to say it, as much as we think all this crap is cool, if we were rich, I would definitely not be moving 10,000 pounds of gravel by hand. I'd have somebody in here just leveling it off for me. Or I'd have a nice big machine. Or we'd have a nice big machine to do it ourselves. <laughs> that's exactly what we would have, but we're still having a good time. What we will be rich in is experience and energy and fitness. Ain't that right, baby? I got that ranch body back. Woo! I'm rich in that gal right there. <laughs> <laughs> Some days we truly work sun up to sundown here at the ranch. It's all of the emotions, right? It's, it's good, it's bad, it's intense, it's physically demanding, mentally demanding. At the end of the day, we like crack a beer and we just like look at what we've done. And tomorrow morning we get to wake up and that whole pad will be graveled. Tree planted, check. Floor is laid, check. Brand new gravel pad, also check. Last and final check, two pretty sore backs. You better believe it. See you guys next week. Cheers, fam. Cheers.